Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. In this week's video, I'm gonna paint the repair robot. This is it, I'm finally reaching the end of this build. And in this video, I'm gonna show some things that I did kinda right and some things that I did wrong and that I learned from. So without any further ado, let's get to it. So these are all the pieces of the project. It's not a crazy amount, the combat robot had twice this, the number of pieces but it is a nice amount of work anyways also I gotta say that I feel like in this project I reached a new level of detail so this makes the painting process even harder to try to keep these details on the piece I'll begin by attaching each piece to a rod either a steel rod or a plastic rod in order for it to be painted by the airbrush some of the pieces, like the smaller ones, will be holded on this clip right here, this steel clip that is used with electronics, while others, like the bigger pieces, will be attached to the steel rod directly in a hole or something like that. And these are all the pieces attached to a rod, either by a hole or a metal clip like the tiny ones right here but before I begin painting the robot I decided to try some of my paint test pieces if you want to know how I made this paint test piece there's a video here in the channel I'll put the link on the description box and this is the color that I decided to go for the robot this really dark gray at first I decided to try some sponge chipping technique to make the chipping but then I decided to try a different type of chipping. In this one right here you can see the sponge chipping technique being used and the result is good but it's not as good as the second one. In the second one I painted the piece in the metal color first and then I applied the dark gray and went chipping with some sharp tool. In my opinion, the second technique works way better than the first one, so this is what I'm going to do in the whole project. Now, don't worry, because I'll show you guys how I made this second technique on the arm of the robot, step by step. I begin by mixing the metal color. This is water-based paint, so not the best metal out there, but anyways, and then I applied it to the arm, like the first coat. And this is the result right here, I just have to leave it to dry. Once it was dry, I applied the dark gray to the arm on the top of this first layer. Now some people apply a coat of varnish in between layers, but I just don't, didn't have time. Once again, I waited for it to get dry and then I can start chipping it. That's when the sharp tools come in hand. And also, as I didn't apply the coat of varnish in between the layers, I have to be really careful because otherwise I'll reach the primer pretty fast. To be able to remove the paint quite quickly and without applying too much force, I rub some alcohol on the piece as you can see in the shot. This is a really delicate job and I think you should try to learn it. Of course we'll make a lot of mistakes on the first tries, but it's all worth it. Also in this part of the process, we have to think about the chipping and chip the areas where it makes sense, of course. And this is the first piece chipped and some may think that I overdid it and I kind of maybe overdid it. but. This is a repair robot and I think this bumps and another stuff all the time so I think chip is a good thing to have in this model. And here you have all four pieces of both arms chipped. Now the only thing left to do here is to apply the matte varnish to it. Thank you. 
I don't have a color map for this project so I decided to go just by feel changing the grays on the paint job so for instance on this battery pack I decided to go for two different types of gray two shades of gray and I went for it and I'll do that for the whole project I'll just go painting and changing the color where I feel it's necessary I know this can be tricky and I can end up with a project that doesn't look as good as I want it to be but I feel like sometimes I like to do that I like just to go by feel and risk it and in this battery pack I also did the chipping technique showing the metal color underneath I always like to have an accent color in my projects and this one is no different. So I had this paint right here that is a leftover from the combat robot build and I felt it looked nice against the dark gray so I decided to apply some of that to my repair robot. And as you can see I'm applying the color by brush, I'm not using my airbrush. And this is because I want this part of the robot to look kinda improvised. So because of that the brush technique was just good enough for this part. And just as the paint sets I just started scratching it with some sharp tools to create the improvised look that I was reaching for. Then I started applying that same accent color to some other parts of the robot. Like this tiny piece right here on the lower leg and then I chipped it in the same way. The paint is not even 100% set and I'm already chipping and I know this can be controversial to some modelers out there but I just feel it did the job just fine and the robot started looking cool with this accent color really beat up. Once I was satisfied with the amount of accent colored pieces on the robot, I moved on to the next part of the process, which is adding some letters and symbols to the robot. Now, this part of the process should really be done with some decal paper, but I don't have any decal paper with me, so I decided to just work with what I had in hand. And I know masking the letters wouldn't be as precise as the decal paper, but I just wanted to have fun, work with what I had, and not worry too much about it. Now, just keep in mind that these types of processes are really time consuming. It takes a lot of time to mask some letters uh, with tiny strips of masking tape, but I mean, I just wanted to try it anyways. So after a while I had this P right here in the power drill, I'll do a P and a D as for the power drill. I also did this tiny shock symbol, electric shock symbol on the battery pack and I also did a bunch of other symbols on some other pieces of the project. Nothing too fancy, I just went and started adding symbols and kind of creating what I felt made sense. And in this shot right here, I'm just kind of showing you guys how I made the electric shock symbol with my X-Acto knife, just by hand freely, I don't have a drawing to follow, kind of just having fun and trying and testing. And to be honest, I feel like the result is good enough, so I just added a bunch of those in my project. Now, when you're working with water-based paints, the masking tape can be tricky and you can have lots of leaking points. And the trick here is to apply multiple passes, use lots of air, but not too much ink flow. 
and I'm using my Pesh airbrush it is a single action airbrush and the control of the amount of ink that comes out is kind of tricky but just try it over and over and you'll get the idea and then after multiple passes I removed my masking tape and the symbols were there kind of nice and well painted so I was happy about it After multiple days of work, I had all of the pieces of the robot paint on this color scheme. The base dark gray and the accent color. And of course, I also had the symbols that I did with masking tape. Then I applied a matte varnish and this was a mistake. I will talk more about that soon. But all the pieces were done and I could move on to the wash process. In this project I'm making an oil wash so I grabbed my oil paints and I mixed this really dark brown and then I added the thinner and made it really really thin so the key here is to make like just a dirty water you don't have to make a heavy paint so that you can like make the model dirt and then clean it And there's no secret here just grab a brush use your watered down oil paints and make the model dirty and then you clean it but you guys remember that I just said that I made a mistake and the mistake that I made right here is to use the matte varnish before the wash so what happens here is that the oil wash really really grabs into the matte varnish and the preferred way to go here is to use some glossy varnish in this part of the process leaving the matte varnish just for the finishing touch just as the last layer in the build it's funny because in my previous projects in my other builds I already did it the right way. I used the glossy varnish in between the layers leaving the matte varnish just for the final touch in the model. And I always did it like that because I knew it was the preferred way to go. But sometimes you kind of have to make the mistake to kind of learn and really understand why some things are the way they are. And next time I'm gonna use my clear glossy varnish in between the layers and now I know that the matte varnish kind of grabs the wash so yeah uh, I'm always learning now some parts of this robot needed to be kind of dirtier than the others like the feet for instance it has contact to the ground it is always tapping in dirty stuff so I grabbed some other colors of oil paint and I made them really dirty also since this is a repair unit it is kind of always handling some oiled stuff some dirty stuff from other machines so I also made the hands kind of dirty Another cool detail I added to this project is the fingers of the robot. As you can see some fingers has a different color and in my mind, in my narrative, this is because the robot can lose fingers all the time in between some heavy machinery so I just made it like that. And as the last touch I created some drips of oil in the forearm of the robot just by banging some wet brush against this pencil and kind of creating this drip effect. After that I applied the final matte varnish coat to the robot and then I could start putting it together. So 
so there you have it this is the repair robot painted I gotta say that I took a different route on the painting of this robot the painting process it is by far the most painful to me it, the most hard and the most demanding for me so this time I decided to have some fun and not worry too much about it but as a result of this choice I made some mistakes like applying the matte varnish before the oil wash but at the end of the day I kind of learned from it and also I think like the result is good I'm really pleased with how it looks so it is a really nice and a positive result and in the next video I'm gonna really finish this project I'm gonna paint the base the other pieces and also the woman engineer so this is it for this video guys if you liked what you saw don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button also leave me a comment I try to reply to as many as I can if you want to go one step further you can donate me on my coffee account the link is in the description box but this is it for now guys and as always thanks for watching